Christy Brown arrives at a charity event at Lord Castlewellan's estate. Here he is taken to a separate room and left with Mary Carr. He shows her his book and they strike up a convo. In the book Mary sees an illustration that shows Christy's mother, Bridget. He drew her himself, as well as many other pictures. Christy is an unusual guy. He was born diagnosed with cerebral palsy. When his father Paddy found it out, he went to a bar to get drunk. That's when they started laughing at him. He punched the offender and left. The Browns had many children, and they never stopped showing up. When Christy was old enough, his mother was pregnant again. Even so, she did not spend the extra money on herself, but saved it for Christy's wheelchair. She kept the money in a tin in the fireplace. Bridget had to go to the hospital, so she pulled Christy up to the second floor. Patty was out, and so were the kids. As she was coming down, she began to feel sick. Christy could hear his mother calling for the neighbor, but she couldn't hear Bridget over the noise outside. He realized his mother had fainted and rushed to help her. He could only crawl, but Christy managed to the door and started pounding on it. A neighbor heard him and came to help. She assumed that Bridget was going down the stairs with her son and had fallen. She could not have imagined that a sick child could come all that way and call for help. All the neighbors, and Christy's parents, thought he was mentally retarded. But he was not. One day he tried to show it to his family. His sister was solving a school problem and asked their father for help, but he didn't know the answer. So Christy took a crayon with his left foot and tried to write something on the board. His parents thought it was just a scribble. Christy was wheeled around the street on a cart. His brothers and the neighborhood boys carted him around with much joy. Once they even hit a magazine with naked women in it so their mother wouldn't find it. Christy lay on it for a long time so it wouldn't be discovered, but it did happen when his father took him to bed. A priest came to the Brown's house to talk to Christy about religion, but the boy was afraid of him. His parents were religious people, they attended church regularly, and Christy began going there with his mother. She would bring him on a cart and tell him about church traditions. Christy even prayed, repeating after his mother. Christy didn't go to school, but he saw the other children doing homework. He also took a crayon and drew dashes on the floor. Patty thought his son was trying to draw a triangle, but that wasn't what Christy wanted. He gathered strength and wrote the word, mother, on the floor. At this point, Patty recognized him as his son. He was ready to tell everyone around him that Christy was a brown too, and that he was a genius. Patty even dragged him to the bar to brag. My son, genius. When Christy turned 17, they took him out to play soccer. He'd stand in goal and catch balls. When players on the other team tried to knock the ball out from under his head, he could even bite. What is more, Christy was even trusted to score a penalty kick, and he coped with the task. In the evening, the guys sat down to play a bottle game. Christy was there too. As Rachel was spinning the bottle, the neck pointed at him, and she had to kiss him. She had a crush on Christy's older brother Tom though. When he returned home, he drew a picture for Rachel with a wish. However, she didn't appreciate the gift. When she found out that Christy had drawn it, not Tom, she went to him and returned the drawing. One day, Patty came home with a severance package. He had been laid off because of a minor industrial accident. The Browns didn't have much money, and now they had even less. From then on, they had to eat oatmeal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The children didn't like it. Tom even tried to protest, but his father made him finish his porridge. Only Christy was humorous about the situation and tried to make the whole family laugh. However, Patty wasn't laughing. He even wanted to hit his son for the joke, but changed his mind at the last moment. Soon the Browns ran out of the coal they used to heat the house, and the children were freezing at night. Christy came up with a plan to get fuel. He and his brothers spotted the coal car and stopped it. While Christy distracted the driver, the brothers opened the deadbolts on the back of the truck. As the truck went downhill, some of the coal spilled out onto the road. Neighbors picked it up off the pavement. Christy and his brothers brought home some coal too. Bridget didn't want to take it because it was stolen, but Patty didn't mind. From that day on, they had a fire in the fireplace again. But that's where Bridget kept her stash, and the money almost burned. Christy spotted it just in time to tell the family. When Patty found out they'd had the money all along and had to eat oatmeal, he got mad. But Bridget said it was chair money for Christy, and they couldn't touch it. Christy's sister liked to walk late with the boys. One day she came home and announced that she was expecting a baby and was going to get married. This news did not make Patty happy. He lost his temper and even wanted to beat his daughter. The other children heard it, but there was nothing they could do. Christy tried to confront his father, but his sister stopped him. While Mary read Christy's life story, he sat quietly sipping alcohol from a bottle. To distract her, he asked for matches. But Mary quickly realized why he was doing this. She took the bottle, poured it into a glass, and handed it to Christy to make him more comfortable to drink. Also, Dr. Eileen Cole stopped by. She had come to the fundraiser, for it was thanks to her that Christy was made known to the general public. 
You do well. So do you. When he was 19, Eileen helped his mother choose a wheelchair. She dealt with children with cerebral palsy and suggested that Christy be admitted to the clinic where she worked. He agreed, but soon regretted it. He was the only adult patient, and it depressed him. Christy asked to go home. Eileen promised to work with him individually. Christy resisted for a while, but then he agreed. The therapy was paying off. The patient spoke better, began to breathe properly and his overall condition improved. Bridget suspected that her son had made such progress because he was in love with Eileen. She feared Christy would be heartbroken, which can be worse than a physical ailment. During one of her classes, Christy confessed to Eileen that he really liked her. However, she could not reciprocate his feelings. Eileen was just being polite to him and acting friendly. She was able to arrange for an exhibition of Christie's paintings. The event was a great success. After that, Christie, Eileen and her friends went to a restaurant. Here Christie confessed that he loved her, but then pretended it was said in jest. He had drunk a lot and could no longer control his emotions. At that moment Eileen told him that she would soon marry Peter, who had helped with the art exhibition. Christie was terribly upset by the news. He got drunk and made a scene. <laughs> Christie stopped painting. His mother helped him cope. She talked to him, then went out into the yard and started to make a separate room for her son. That way he could spend more time painting. Christie went down to help her, but it didn't work out so well. I'm sorry, man. When Patty and his sons returned, they got to work, too. Things got funnier, and by the end of the day, Christie had his own private room. Not long after that, Patty died. Bridget and her son came home one day and found him unconscious on the floor. After the funeral, the whole family went to Patty's favorite pub. Here they interfered with other visitors, who spoke roughly about the head of the family, and the Browns punished them. Along the way, they trashed the place. After burying his father, Christy decided to express the feelings that tormented him in his art. He asked his brother to help him write a book. Yeah, of course we will. But then he taught himself to type and began to write. This book made him famous, he got money and gave it to his mother. Bridget had taken care of him for so many years, and Christy wanted to return the favor. One day, Eileen visited him and asked him to attend a fundraiser. Christy agreed. Here he met Mary, and he liked her very much. However, she had the one to go on a date. Christy tried to get her to like him, but Mary would not even agree to stay until the end of the event. When Christy was asked to speak, he did not come out to the guests immediately. As the part from his book was being read out, Mary appeared. After the banquet was over, Christie sent the family home and stayed to be with her. They began dating and married in 1972.